Hey guys, Harry here, back with another Brit Lane vlog, and uh, it's just some more footage from that gay balls running uh, that I've been using for the last two videos. I've sort of stopped making my videos titles very long now, so I'm just gonna say Brit Lane vlog and then the topic, because I was using like calling everything like a fourth lift or a band lift or whatever, and I'm just gonna cut that bit out. It just saves me less effort, and sort of you guys can see. Um, the the topic's easier. Um, I'm basically using the last few clips that I recorded over the last week. Um, I didn't record anything uh, last week really, other than a bit of block work on a block work corner um, that I built. Uh, basically, a bit of a disadvantage building your brickwork first if you've got a radon barrier like we have, because of fighting with that radon barrier when you're doing your block work, and then especially building corners because. In all honesty, I could maybe set an internal profile up, but because it, the radon barrier is there, it's really awkward and you can't you can't really set an internal profile up when the when you've got a radon barrier, unless you set your corner blocks beforehand. So if you set your two corner blocks at each end, then you could maybe clamp on a profile. But it's really hard with that radon barrier on your for, for your first course. You've kind of got to get that out your way you're probably best doing two course all the way around your plot block and then doing all your brickwork and then you can leave your your holes out you know you can still access your tray and everything to clean it easily because you're only like you know one block over the tray and then but then again you've got to leave your blocks out for you know to access your radon barrier so it, it's i don't know i'm going to try it a few different ways just see how it goes um, but today's topic, I'm going to talk about like wet weather uh, since we're coming up to winter and because the forecast this week's give terrible and I'm going to talk about wet weather and gazebos. Um, basically, I've tried using a pop-up gazebo. I've got a 3 meter by 3 meter gazebo. I've tried laying bricks under it. Uh, I saw a video by Charlie Collison about a year and a half ago before I even watched Brick Lane videos, before I even made a YouTube channel or anything like that. I watched him using one. I can't remember if he was successful using it, um, but I know he's used it multiple times in summer. Um, it's one of them things, I've only ever used it in wet weather just to carry on working. It was ideal for me once you're doing some work on a boundary wall. I did. I built a big pier and a big corner with it. Um, I, did, I used it squaring around a stone garage, a single garage. You know, it works and it doesn't. You've got sort of, basically what you've got to do is keep your gear dry that you're gonna be walling with and then set your gazebo up. So have your gear already there covered, set your gazebo up and then you need to make um, a bit of a tarpaulin shelter over your, over, your, uh, over your tub. So a couple of bits of wood stood up with F clamps with a tarpaulin over it, like a TP. And then you can sort of keep your gobbo dry and then, you know, bucket it from the tub to where you're working under the gazebo. Um, you know, it, it, the possible applications for using it if you've got a big enough one. I've got, I've had a, I use a three meter by three meter. Uh, it's probably the ideal size because you get like a meter in your working area and then meter each side of you know coverage area where you're working. So it goes over your gear that you're loading out and the wall. So you could probably ideally use it building big corner, building a big corner uh, on a brick when you're doing brick at first. Uh, same again doing block work. You know, if you're on a band lift and the scaffolds at similar height to the floor or not too high because you can always sort of prop the gazebo up on a few blocks at one ha one side to make it semi-level and you've got to just make sure where the edges of the gazebo are there's no uh gear because water runs off the top of it like fuck um it's still like working in the re wet rain you just don't get wet you go just as slow as working in the rain as well because you've got to keep di dipping in and out of the gazebo Gotta make sure you got, you know, at least a weatherproof jacket on. Um, you know, your gear's still gonna be wet. You know, you're still gonna, you know, you're not gonna be have rain hitting your work, but the gear is still gonna feel wet on the boards. You know, you're gonna get splash splashbacks if it's heavy enough. And I don't really recommend using one unless it's just heavy drizzle. Or it's drizzly intermittent throughout the day where you're getting, you know, dry spells and wet spells. Um, I'm gonna try using it this week. I think I can't use it tomorrow because I haven't got it and the work we're doing don't really suit it. Um, 
Well, we're doing what we're, we've got quite a bit of loading up to do. Uh, I don't know if Mel's going in or not, but I know Dean will be. We've got a lot. We're going to load some block work out in the morning. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be walling, running the gable. They're going to be loading block work out. Uh, that's why I don't load out too far in front. I try to get everyone on the trowel. At the moment, people were saying, you know, you were stacking. I saw a comment saying, oh, you were stacking your own bricks up with two odd carriers. And you remember, it, I've only got two odd carriers in the true, true sense of the word. Of, like, the missus is just helping me, really. She's just, like, you'll see her in this video just sat pointing up, or she'll be fetch, fetch me an odd bucket of gobbo, or she'll spread for me, or just. Uh, another thing I like to do as well, with, especially with two odd carriers, if Dean's laying at one end of the wall, because he's getting to the point now where he can lay three or four bricks without him going, you know, too far out of whack to up to the line. So he'll take time laying four, five, six bricks at one end of the line uh, after he's spread the full wall. And then I'll height if I'm at I mean, if I'm at like a, a decent height, I'll have basically Mel passing me bricks as I go along the wall. Makes it a lot quicker. Or I'll have either uh, stacking bricks up. But the only problem is with these with these concrete bricks is it's hard to get them stacked pretty stable up high uh, because of the weight of them they tend to rock about so it is a bit of a ball ache as well i always find this as well when especially we're in we're in tight spots both gables have been quite tight it's hard it's hard to get like people in between your stacking bricks a lot of time you, they get in your way and stuff um so i'll normally have after we get so high and dean can't lay anymore It'll just spread and I'll have Mel pass me bricks. Uh, makes it go a lot quicker, especially with long spreads. And if someone's already spread out for you and you're just sliding bricks in, it's really good, especially when you're reaching up. It's really ideal. Um, when we're doing block work also, I didn't get any of this on film. Just I just didn't have my camera on me at the time. But when we're doing block work, I'll, I'll do the bed and uh, Mel do the perps. So, or Dean will do the perps. And I like the blocks stacked up on the end. So either Mel will just stack all the blocks on the end for me so I can just put my perp on and lift them up. Um, and then I'll just do the little bed. Uh, or Dean will do the perps. But I find even doing the perps on some of these dry blocks, it goes off so wet, wet so quick. I'd just rather someone lay the blocks out in front of me stood on end so I can quickly put a perp on and lift it up. Um, that's probably the fastest way I find it. It is it is hard getting a rhythm, but we've got we've got a good rhythm with on brickwork now. I'm just trying to get everyone in rhythm on block. Uh, I'm gonna try to get Dean laying a few blocks at some point, but that's why I'm sort of emphasising a lot of people, a lot of everyone on the trowel. You know, just speeding me up in general. I know it. I know it sounds like you know why are you not getting them all to load out in front and stuff like that, uh, which I do. But because we've been dropping back doing those two lots of cups we did. Um, and I'm not a permanent one and two, I'm just sometimes one and two, sometimes one and one, like I was today. It is something that, you know, it, it, I'm working on really getting organised. And a lot of the time as well, because they are very new, they're not experienced, they don't know where to load out. So I'm having to say, right, I want it loading out here. Uh, and a lot of the time, because I've not worked in, uh, you know, work managing two or hoddies or two, two apprentices in a sense, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to tackle each house yet because of it, this, the, you know, the gang, uh, you know, the gang synergy with two compared to one's very different. You, you know, you attempt builds differently. That comes back a bit to me, plan your builds video. I, I'm still trying to plan things, but obviously then plans can change, you know, depending on weather. Uh, I saw one at lads today as we were, as I were leaving at about half one, quarter two, he was still laying blocks in the rain and, you know, you can do it. You can lay yourself onto the rain, but this with this radon barrier, you're really losing some stability. You can maybe build corners, but it just it just makes your work look a bit rough. And if you aren't set up with blocks, you know, got all your blocks covered and stuff, it can really make a balls up of your work. So I don't like to do too much in the rain if it's heavy. You know, the the price is that good these days where you can just you know work a bit longer on a sunny day on a nice on a nice day if you want to work till 6 30 or summer you know if everyone wants to make up their hours on a following day um that's basically that's basically your options because that's what i like to do if you know if, if we leave at say two o'clock and someone's got a three and we, you know and the two oddies have got three quarter days in you know um you know, some people say, oh, that's wrong, you should pay for a day, but I believe in, you know, you, you're only working for what, you know, for the hours you're there. And if, you know, if I've not laid bricks for two or three hours, we're not earning any money there. 
so everyone can't have a full day's wage if you're losing two hours a day so i pay everyone an hourly wage and uh and i say you know if you want to work later tomorrow to make up that 25 quid or that two hours or whatever that you're missing because i think it works out 12 50 an hour i pay dean and mel um if you want to make up those hours that we've lost we can work well six o'clock the following day you know we normally leave at about four we start about eight leave at four uh between four and four thirty so if you want to make up an hour and a half and we're we're on a good run we loads of stuff to do you know you can make up a couple hours there you know i'm not to half an hour i'm pretty generous with that I'm, you know if we're if in two hours we lay you know uh, 100 100 blocks or something like that that's you know that's easily made up a couple hours of their wages and made me obviously some money so you know if we're if we're on you know that's how i do it you know some guys do it differently you know it's, it's up to them but i've always done it on an hourly an hourly basis um you know it is one of the things wet weather people don't always understand who haven't been in the game who haven't been in the brick lane game you know obviously you're, you're not you're not getting paid when you're not working it's, you know flat out and hopefully we'll mitigate a lot of this using trying to use the gazebo trying to do brick work first trying to do block work in the wetter days um but we'll see i've got to get some more rainproof wet wear in a sense we've got to just get a nice rainproof coat really and then and then I, obviously this hopefully this rain won't take too much of an effect on me if i just continue to try and do the the uh the block work on the wet days and the brick work on the dry days uh, i've also got a video i'm going to do i'm going to talk about you can see the brown brush there in the corner i'm going to do a video on that brown brush it's a soft brush. I find it makes a good finish of these concretes, even when they're wet. Um, I've got a tactic for jointing them. You can join when you, when they're wet, you've got to give them a really light brush and they tend to come up really good uh, with them. They tend to set them on sharp edges off the corners. They make all the joints sort of, um, they don't smudge the, the, the joints, so they just all blend together nicely. Just like, you know, just it's a, it is like a, it's not an exact horse hair brush. It's like a really soft, uh, really really soft bristle brush makes a great job of the brickwork especially when it's wet and I'm one of these now who I don't like to leave jointing overnight um, unless the bricks are really really wet you get a lot of crust that comes in your joints you got to over point them it kills your time to uh, joint stuff the day after so if you can joint it there and then and then you just give it a nice light brush any jointing that's smudged or needs a little bit of stroking over it you know uh, the day after it takes about 10 5 10 minutes whereas if you leave the leave it unjointed and don't stroke in don't brush it you've got all those hard edges that are quite hard to get off you've got to use a stiffer brush and then you sometimes end up brushing that crust that crusty gone off bit off the front of the ready mix and making it all wet again it's just a nightmare to do so if you can try and especially with these concretes or any any brick that holds the water you know some of your some of your red row frog bricks were really like that as well they used to get really wet and soapy um uh so yeah using that using any sort of uh cavendish brick or uh, london i uh, stock brick they're a nightmare as well when they get wet so that's really what a thing i'm going to show i'm going to talk about this um let's talk about this brushing off brush i'm using i'm going to go over the new shovel we've got and new buckets we're using that we're finding pretty good um so yeah uh, I, I want to hear some of you guys' you know thoughts on buckets, shovels. Comment, you know, we've got a really small little shovel. We've got, uh, you know, I'm not going to go into it too much. I'm going to show you which what I've got. Uh, just it was mainly in in uh, sight of Mel as well. And here as well, if you can see, I'm doing the meter box openings. I can't tell you exactly what I left. I think I made them 380. I think the actual measurement for a meter box is 375, 37 and a half centimeters or 300 you know 375 mil i'm sure that's why i left these 380 a little bit extra extra room or i think it's it might be three even 365 a meter box i can't remember but i remember i made them about 380 and the way i found that it is is good to do them is you know both both, both um, end openings make them work bricks um and then do the middle half three quarter just on top of each of that. I find that works. I find that works the best. Um, some people just do like stacker bond, like a brick stacker bond, you know, or like a three quart stacker. Um, I just think a brick and arc is a bit more stability. Uh, I've seen guys who like use like meter box frames and stuff, and like uh, brick work and stuff like that. But 
you know, I just normally use my eye, put put level up, you know, twice with a little two foot level. It's good enough. Uh, yeah, so obviously I use two foot level there. I know next two course, I can't be that far out with it. Um, but yeah, well, that's uh, well, that's that's about it for this video. Um, obviously, still doing pick and dip on the concretes. Uh, I, I've found that's the best way to lay these bricks. Long spread pick and dip or long spread front tip. Uh, no grooves, no grooves in your spread. I cannot emphasize the no grooves in this, you know. As so, soon as you put like a flat spread or a uh, V's in these, they start sinking all over the place. You want that yeah, full bed joint, uh, you know, with the sort of the triangle, the sort of pyramid bed, pyramid spread, I like to call it, where you're just taking the, taking your back and your front off and leaving that, that toe board own V shape, uh, you know, that pyramid spread style. Uh, it's, it's something that uh, was taught, taught to me years ago for when we were laying frog down. Um, Bricky, who I was working with at the time, says, you know, if you're going to lay frog down, just don't, just take the front and back off your spread, don't put any Vs in it, so you're not creating any voids. And I just do this same principle, um, laying bricks frog up or with holes, because I always lay frog up now anyway, uh, but the difference is when you lay like a frog brick, you just don't need as much mortar as you do on the, the bricks with holes in. I find the bricks with the holes in tend to swallow it a lot more. And... Uh, you know, it's definitely it's definitely the probably the optimal way now. I like to, I like to teach any apprentice to lay bricks because you have a lot more control over your spread when you're not putting your V's, your grooves in your spread. Your grooves in your spread are to help you press the brick down um, and minimise all your squeeze out. But if you're putting no grooves in, you have a lot more time to squeeze your brick down. You you can get more squeeze out of your next joint. It's you have more control over it, I find. If you're putting grooves in your spread, one little press and it's below the line, one little tap and it's gone too far. Whereas if you if you just do a pyramid spread, it's it's definitely beneficial for the uh, you know for the apprentice. And if you're angling your backside of your spread away from the wall and you're rolling that mortar to the front of the joint, uh, you're not going to be filling the cavity too too excessively. You know, there's always going to be cavity droppings, but I've found pick and dip probably drops less mortar than laying traditional and guys will say all all day long oh it's rough it's this and that and uh, i had a, a, a guy comment asking you know saying that it looked like i had done pick and dip for years and i've only been at it about nine months exclusively laying um with a pick and dip style bed even with a tr putting a traditional joint on it and laying pick and dip in various different ways whether it's one at a time or a long spread variant and it gives you a wider way of laying bricks i lay i build corners pick and dip now especially on gables i just you know stroke my joint in um slide my joint in i do corners pick and dip uh if i'm on gables i'll do obviously big corners with a line on pick and dip i'll do you know i'll very rarely do traditional and if i do it's more more or less a front tip style spec mix um mimicking that style really uh, because the the front tip is one of the best. The front and top tip, or the or the top tip, or the front and back tip is one of the best, and the fastest ways to lay traditional. You know, putting the joint on with the brick in your hand, it's it is it's sometimes alright. It's sometimes alright. I sometimes like to put it on the back of the brick, uh, but I don't put it on the front of the brick anymore in my hand. And then because I find the perp drops off a lot, I find you don't get as nice co nicer contact with the joint. Uh, obviously, it's to each. Um, it's through each pe person's preference, but I find over a day you'll be feel a lot less knackered, especially doing one brick at a time picking dip. That's really good. Um, I'm currently using a nine inch W Rose, uh, narrow London. This is fantastic for picking dip. You know, it's better than this, even than this Tizek. It picks just the right amount of mortar up. I can probably pick still the same amount of mortar up, just less restrain. Eases through stiffer mortar, obviously, which is ideal for in wet weather since we're coming to. You know the wet weather a bit of drizzle in the air and you can your mortar still workable um whereas in big trowels really the especially the wider heel trowels really struggle to get through that stiff mortar and work through that you know because you are having to use a stiffer mix in winter everyone does regardless of your gear and does it on concrete so that's more so uh you know in literally when it when you've got wet concrete bricks your mix has to be stiff and it has to be uncomfortably stiff a lot of the time because the, especially if you're just going to pick and dip it uh, one brick at a time 
you know you can really take your brickwork up full height with a stiff mix whereas if you get it a little bit more workable a little bit more of a long spread with these concretes any moisture that's in them they're basically not going to withstand you are going more than 10 or 15 10 or 12 course whereas if you get it a bit stiffer you can maybe stretch to 18 uh, maybe it's even 20 odd with just the right strategy in the day you know maybe um maybe as opposed to building corners you can sometimes run a full length in but i still like to do the corners big corners i like to keep an eye on um you know a section at once because these corners they do tend to go out of plumb a little bit on these concretes i had a couple i had the gable friday's gable which i post as the rougher gable that middle expansion always tries to belly tries to belly on you like belly inwards i find it tends to smile at you so that is something that i've been very um you know conscious of i've started building my expansions as i go i'm going to probably do it like that i like to call it the collison method because i remember watching loads of his videos where he did that uh with the, his two apprentices Harry and liam i think it was years ago, all that all them months ago uh so I, I that's probably the easiest way on these concretes to stop and belly in as much uh do it your expansion as you go but it is a weak spot it is somewhere where it will tend to smile so you've just got to keep an eye on it so i do like to limit you know any big stop ends with if unless i've got a profile up it to sort of give it some stability so i'm going to go through a few methods next week uh on these with the, with these radon barriers and on this block work and i'll see which what i like best doing uh, which i find easiest and expect next tomorrow's video uh to be a block work building a block work corner building video so i can call myself the traditional bricklayer on that video as well so anyway guys uh thanks all for watching um i'll you know expect a video every couple of days and then i'll be back using uh, my new phone um the poco x3 and then i'll have all my videos saved on my phone regularly with the net with my sd card so i can sort of hold on to more videos on my phone because i've got 300 gig of storage or more i've probably got close to 400 and then i can constantly pump videos out for you guys without having to mess around trying to transfer clips so Anyway guys, thanks for watching, here's a few photos, if you enjoyed the video, uh, subscribe for more content, click on the like button, leave us a comment, get the algorithms out there for YouTubes, and uh, show some support. Thank you very much, I will see you guys in the next video.